Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on our January giveaway. We're excited to have you guys. Happy New Year to everyone. We are really excited about this month's giveaway. We're announcing, I'm sorry, the December giveaway. Here's what you can expect in about the next hour. We're gonna welcome some of our friends uh, from Focal. We are really excited to give away a full home theater package with all the bells and whistles, which we're gonna explain here in just a minute. Uh, so we're excited to announce our lucky winner. And in addition to our home theater giveaway, we also have an additional uh, three giveaways. We're giving away the name Muso QB, which is an $899 uh, value. And also in addition to that, two wireless Spark headphones. So those are gonna go to folks who ask the best question. So if you have a question, go ahead and start firing those away. We can see the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, we can see all of those comments coming in. Uh, so again, we've got some great prizes for best question. In addition to, again, our full home theater uh, giveaway. So give us a, uh, let us know where you guys are dialing in from. Uh, obviously, Leon and myself are here in Raleigh, North Carolina. We've got to welcome some friends from, from all over the country here in just a minute. Uh, but mm -hmm. thanks again for joining us. And again, we are excited to welcome our friends from Focal. And we're going we're gonna to let them uh, explain the full home theater package giveaway. So uh, first, Chris, we will start with you. Let everyone know, you know where, where you are from and uh, obviously what you do with uh, Focal. And then also today we're asking everyone, what is the best concert that you can remember going to? Since obviously it's been a while since all of us have, have been to a concert. Obviously we've asked first concert, but I thought it'd be fun uh, just to kind of re rekindle some of the fun memories of the best concert that you've been to. So Chris, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Sure, so uh, thanks for having us. Uh, obviously uh, we're excited about this. Um, I'm located out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So I'm on the west coast of, of Canada. And so it's mid afternoon for me here. I am the North American product specialist for Focal. So I do cover Canada and US. I do all the product trainings as well as all the trade shows, uh, as well as uh, I work with uh, our team in France for new product development. Um, I have to tell you my, my, my most favorite mm -hmm. memorable concert, even though I've seen hundreds of them, uh, has got to be Garth Brooks. I mean, the energy, cool. the, 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 just, just the atmosphere is that was absolutely amazing and it will forever, uh, you know, sit in my mind. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome again. And it is a happy hour. So let's let everyone know maybe what it is that you're drinking there with you. So I, I am a rum and coke guy, so I'm a captain and coke guy because uh, <laughs> I can travel a lot. So and I can I can find consistency with that at least. So so yeah. cheers to you guys. Yeah, cheers, absolutely. Cheers. Great. Well, excited to have you, Chris. Thanks again for joining us, uh, Francois. Thank we'll come you. to you next. Well, uh, my name is Francois. I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm living in Montreal in Canada, so uh, east east side of Canada. Um, uh, I used to be the uh, sales rep for your area, but um, I had a promotion in January. Now I'm the uh, national sales manager for Canada. But since we, you know, we talked about this uh, before uh, my promotion, so that's why I'm here today uh, to be able to uh, to join you and be able to to share my passion. Actually, um, about the concert, uh, that's a very tricky question because uh, I have two in mind. Actually, uh, I would say uh, Peter Gabriel. Uh, was uh, one of my best concerts and also um, one concert from uh, U2. I uh, really oh. enjoyed uh, So, yeah, pretty good stuff, yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to see U2. I haven't had the chance to yet, maybe one day. And uh, well, what is it that you are drinking this afternoon or this evening as well? <clears throat> so uh, this afternoon, we're having a uh, 5.2 uh, system. Right, well, with, we'll come uh, back to the, the giveaway. I was asking, what, what is oh. it? Drinking. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> drink, so, well, actually, besides to be a, a music lover, I'm also a, a, a home brewer. So uh, today I'm drinking a home brew uh, IPA. So cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Patrick, coming to you next. Welcome. All right. I'm Patrick Shaughnessy. Um, I'm the Eastern Territory Manager. So basically, the U.S. is split in half, and I manage the eastern uh, side of, of the U.S. Um, I, um, the, the, my favorite concert was actually, I lived in Charlotte for five years, uh, back from 2003 to 2008. And my wife surprised me, um, with a concert. I was a big Ben Folds five fan. And, um, so we went out to dinner one night and went to all of a sudden started driving to Davidson college in Davidson, North Carolina, yep. small little private college. You guys are probably familiar with it. Very, very and you go in there and it's Ben Folds, um, by himself, just him and a piano. And it was just absolutely amazing. And uh, and then halfway through the show, he actually allowed people to um, get like sheets of paper out. You could like write your requests, crumple them up, uh -huh. and throw them up on the stage. And he'd 
look at them and say, oh, no, I'm not playing that, or I'll play that. And he played, like, Metallica and some Van Halen on his piano. And it was unbelievable. Wow. So that was, that was my favorite concert for sure. And I forgot to mention I'm out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I'm drinking a Guinness, sticking to my Irish roots. So playing triple <laughs> Guinness. So, yeah. Very, very cool. Very cool. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Leon, welcome back. Obviously, great to, to have you back. Leon is the founder of Audio Vice back in 1978. Leon, what is it? Yeah, uh, I'm the old fart. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leon's got well, a bunch I, of fans. I, lots, I, of, lots of customers from many years ago. You think I'm going to tell you which was my favorite concert based upon my phone, which has the Rolling <laughs> Stones on it. But I'm going yeah. to pull an audible and say it was uh, John Prine did a concert in a very small venue. Uh, back way it was in like 1981 and, and I had front row seats and he sat down for two hours with just an acoustic guitar he was probably 10 feet from me and that was just an incredible experience but the second favorite one was the Rolling Stones in 1975 right after uh, Ronnie Wood had joined the band that was the Tour of America's and Billy Preston was on that tour too it was amazing that was my first Stones concert of many but uh, concerts are a blast I can't wait to get back to them Absolutely, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yes. Indeed. Uh -huh. Seen uh, Pearl Jam, all kind of folks. And it's cool to see folks dialing in from all over the country and, and all over the world. So that's that's really exciting. Um, and I have to give a little look to my brewery. The, uh, it's, this is an Asheville brewery, burial beer. They have the coolest cans. Yeah, this is uh, oh, yeah. the postmodern depictions of natural phenomenon. It's a double IPA, but they, they make great beer. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Mine uh, was in the mid '90s. Patrick, similar to you, my my wife at the time, or my, my wife now, my my girlfriend at the time, surprised me with Dave Matthews and Tim Reynolds uh, tickets at oh, uh, Lawrence Joel Arena, yeah. where Wake Forest uh, University plays basketball. And so it was like a three-hour show, super cool. Just the two of them, you know, jamming for hours. Uh, definitely one of the things that got me inspired to you know pick up the guitar and. and uh, it was a lot, a lot of fun. And I'm drinking the Red Oak, which is a local brewery here in North Carolina, out of Mebane, North Carolina. So they have a, an Amber Ale that's, that's really good, super easy to drink, uh, which is great. So again, thanks everyone for joining us. And again, it's great to have our, our friends from Focal. Francois, I will come back to you and um, let you tell us everyone about the exciting giveaway that we have tonight. So the, the first part of it, because uh, we have uh, several things uh, part of this uh, package, if I can say. Uh, so we have the, um, uh, the SIB uh, EVO uh, speakers uh, with a subwoofer. So it's a 2.1.2. Uh, so that's, that's one thing. Also, we have some um, isoacoustic uh, stand for the subwoofer. And we have some acoustical panel from a company called Viacoustic. And uh, we have uh, uh, diffusion panels and also we have absorption panels. So uh, the, the idea tonight is just not to present you some speaker, but also uh, a pretty good solution for home theater. Great. So we got a lot to unpack, which is really, really cool. We actually set the, uh, the Civivos up in our Raleigh showroom and we're really, really impressed with how well everything sounded for, uh, for that type of a home theater system. So we would love to talk a little bit more about that. We also, uh, you had the isoacoustics that we want to tell everyone a little bit more about for those who don't know what isoacoustic is. They have a great story and obviously, you know, very, very applicable use case. And I think Patrick, you've even got some photos that you can share in your own home uh, of how you have those set up as well as the acoustic, uh, acoustic panels. So we got a lot to talk about. <clears throat> if you have a question about home theater, uh, regardless of what it is, you know, feel free to put those questions in the comments. If you have questions about audio in general, if you guys know, uh, Focal also has a, has a great selection of really high-end premium headphones. We, we'll talk about those a little bit as well. So the first question, Leon, I actually wanted to, uh, to come to you. This was from uh, Michael Thiessen, I believe it is. He, wants to ask, he asked, uh, what inspired you to start Audio Advice? Well, you can actually read about it on our website. Um, it's a funny story. You know, I had, I, went to Wake Forest University, studied economics, and uh, my freshman year I bought a stereo that just, I bought it based upon descriptions without hearing it, and I got it, and it sounded terrible. And this guy down the hall had this one that was really ugly that sounded so much better than mine, and that got my curiosity up as to why that was the case. He had uh, some Dynaco tube stuff and AR speakers and AR cable, and it just, the sound of it was so great. So I had to read about it, and at college, uh, I 
decided to sell stereos for a couple of months and get it out of my system before I got a real job. And uh, I just I just had so much fun at it. I decided to start my own company. I love you know helping people make better sound. It's just so satisfying when someone when that light bulb goes off and they hear the difference. And it's like that's just been so much fun my whole life. I've been blessed to have this great career. You know turning people on to better home theater and better home audio. But it, it was basically the sound that inspired me to do it. Uh, but there's a, a cool article on our website that goes into a lot more detail on all the things that happened along the way. And a great photo of Leon in his college dorm, I believe it That's is. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> some, some cool old school stereo uh, gear back in the day, for sure. So yeah. uh, for those of you who don't know about Audio Vice, you know, again, Leon founded 1978. We have two showrooms, Raleigh and Charlotte, North Carolina. We, foot, we service the entire Southeast, uh, really industry leader in high performance on audio, home theater, home automation. If you have any questions, give us a call. Uh, we have full, you know, very experienced uh, audio experts who are available via email, phone, chat, six days a week. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, that's the biggest sales pitch that you'll get from me tonight. But again, glad to have everyone. The next question I wanted to ask is from Chad Morrow. Uh, so he says he's familiar with Focal from the sort of uh, 12 volt uh, car audio side. For folks who maybe aren't as familiar with, with Focal, maybe you guys can tell us a little bit more about the, the brand story and then what it is that you guys do uh, in addition to, obviously maybe if they've heard of you guys from, from car audio. Sure, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll take this one. Um, so again, um, you know, we, we started back in the, in the seventies as well. We, we were founded by our, our, uh, our founder, Jacques Mahal back in 1979. And, um, you know, Jacques is a, as an acoustic engineer really wanted to, you know, very similar to Leon wanted to, to develop better, better products and, and so on like that and started his own company. Um, and with that is that we put our first, first, uh, you know, home speaker line out of, out in 19, uh, 1982. Um, and then with that just came and, and developed. Now, you know, we do have a huge following on the 12 volt uh, side on our car audio side, uh, especially in the US. And, uh, and a lot of people think that, you know, we, we started in 12 volt because of that and, and then evolved into home where the, where the truth is we started at home and, and didn't bring our car audio line on till 1989. So, but, uh, but what's very unique about us is that we share technologies uh, whether it's our headphones or our car audio or our pro audio or even our home audio is that, uh, you know, we, we share technologies throughout, throughout every category. Yeah. Right. I'm impressed by the way you make your own drivers. Everything's designed, you know, in one place. And uh, for the most part, the higher stuff is made in France as well. So it's, it's yes. pretty cool. Yeah. Right. Actually, it's, it's very funny to learn that uh, Jacques Mahul, when he started the company, why he was able to develop a driver, it's because his father has a tooling uh, machine company. So he was using the knowledge of his father to create new tooling to be able to create drivers. So that's why, you know, wow. the driver from Focal are so specific. Uh, really interesting. So actually, I got a really good question I wanted to ask next, which is from... Uh, Rafael Rodriguez, I believe it is. He says, uh, what makes the beryllium tweeters uh, a better material than using maybe something else in other tweeters? So we, when, when we, and, and again, we use this principle for not only just our tweeters, but every driver we make is that we have what we call an MRD ratio. So this is based on mass, rigidity, and damping. And so with those three features is that we, we tailor it or, or take our pie chart and divide it, um, you know, in certain characteristics. So as an example, on a, uh, you know, on a mid range, we want something with more damping, but maybe not necessarily as much uh, something with a lighter mass. And so when we talk about beryllium is that beryllium really fits the profile of the MRD ratio is that uh, beryllium is, is number four on our periodical chart. So it's, um, it's actually the lightest solid that, that is known to man where, you know, um, elements one, two and three are all gases. So, um, so we have a material that's very light. Uh, beryllium is known because it's extremely strong or rigid. Uh, this is why it's used in things like, um, like fighter aircraft or even uh, any of the projects in the space programs. Um, even, even F1 was using them for brakes until, they, until it got banned just due to an unfair advantage due, due to that. Um, but it also has amazing dampening characteristics where, where again, it, it, it is a material that doesn't ring, so it sounds very natural. 
and that's and that's really why we use the beryllium. Unfortunately, the downside of it is is that there is a cost to it, and and currently right now it sits at about fifty times the price of gold. Uh, and if you watch the news this morning, gold is just hovering just shy of two thousand an ounce mm -hmm. right now. Yep. Uh, next, next interesting question. Uh, let's see. This was from Tyler, I believe. He says your speakers have a unique shape opposed from uh, opposed from standard box shapes from other brands. Does this impact or affect the sound production you receive from your speakers? So maybe they're referring to like the Kanta speakers as opposed to something like the Coraline, which I think anytime I go to a show um, like Rocky Mountain or, or or Expona, I love seeing the the Kantas that you guys always uh, demonstrate. They sound uh, amazing and they look really really sleek as well maybe tell us a little bit more about what goes into the shape design you want me to take this francois i don't want to uh, be the only guy talking all day today but, so. yeah but maybe i can take this one the the, the principle of uh, the actually of the design of the box is also linked uh, to the principles of time time alignment for the drivers in a sense that you know that uh, probably higher frequency will get faster to you here than the base uh, frequency. So they try to shape the cabinet in a, in a certain pattern where everything will be time aligned to the uh, the listener. So that's that's the main principle behind it. But uh, maybe you can complete, uh, Chris. I, maybe I missed some, some details. No, that is wonderful. That's exactly what it is. It is based so that we can, we can basically time align the cabinet so that, that basically, even though we have, you know, two, three, four, speakers within a cabinet is that they all work as one um you know you know and we do this even even in our you know and i'll use my air quotes our entry level uh, chorus series is that we've actually placed um the, the core of speakers back at a 15 degree angle to yeah. to apply that to apply that time alignment into the cabinet awesome uh dustin says who can i sign my stimulus check over to so i can get these before my wife finds out <laughs> 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 it's a great question, Dustin. If you find out, leave, put it in the chat. I'm sure that you uh, you'll have many many takers on that. Uh, <laughs> Brian, uh, let's see here. Brian Becker asks, uh, so we can maybe transition a little bit to home theater questions. He asks, yeah. which gives better immersion, a 5.1.4 or a 7.1.2? So maybe we can talk a little bit about the difference just between you know a 5.1 setup and then maybe a pure Dolby setup, and then talk about specifically. Uh, the sound immersion in those or immersion in those two scenarios. Um, I mean, that's it's it's a uh, there's there's answers on both sides. Um, the fact is is that when we're dealing with with uh, home theater and surround systems, is that we we deal with obviously multiple different planes, and those are separated by the dots. Where you know we start with the first number that becomes you know the the number of speakers sitting within our you know on our ear level or eye level set. Um, the second number obviously is subwoofers and then the third one is our Atmos. So when we're comparing like a 5.1.4 uh, 5 is that, you know, we only have five speakers to create a full surround system where, a, where uh, you know, a seven, a seven um, you know, uh, or a dot seven basically gives us seven speakers. So what that means is that we have less spacing between speakers to create that surround environment. So in that particular case, a seven is better than a five. Um, when we're dealing with Atmos or subwoofers, um, obviously we, we try to have more than one subwoofer, um, mm -hmm. where, you know, we try to have at least two, we have what, a condition, what's called a room node, um, where we can have a standing wave within the room. And so having more than one subwoofer gen generally tends to allow us to eliminate that room node where, you know, where you have peaks and valleys of, of the sub base within the room. And then last but not least is the last number is the Atmos is that when we're dealing with a point two, it means that we have just only two Atmos speakers, which are tend to be in the front of us, um, where we're dealing with a point four gives us two speakers in the front, two speakers in the back. So again, gives us more surround surround effects. So I'm, I guess the ultimate, uh, the, the best answer is a 7.2.4 in that scenario. But I have an opinion. I would say the, uh, <laughs> yep. the four Atmos speakers would be more immersive. Go in that case, it, it, it would be yes. Yeah. 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 I think so. And definitely. I agree. You need five yeah. subwoofers at least. Oh, of yeah. course. <laughs> <laughs> right. Leon, how many subs do you have in your theater? Five. Five. <laughs> I hope, I hope my wife is watching this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
the more the merrier, right? Um, yeah. Zane asks a good question. He says, many home audio enthusiasts, especially those that are newer to the hobby, do not have a perfect room. In a game of compromise, how would you prioritize setup? For example, distance, stereo, imaging, et cetera. So that's obviously a many part question. The, the first question maybe you guys can just speak to in, in an ideal environment, for those who don't know, what is the uh, what is the ideal room configuration? Maybe in terms of length, width, you know, some of those rules and ratios. And then if you don't, which many people do, maybe they're in a multi-purpose room, a media room that's open to a bonus room or family room or kitchen and so forth. You know, maybe some things that you can work around. But I will do a shameless plug on our home theater tool at AudioAdvice.com. If you click on home theater, we have built a great home theater configurator so that you can go in and you can put in the the width, the length, you know, and so forth of the room. Uh, if you want to have, you know, stadium seating with risers where the ideal uh, listening situation will be or listening position will be. And we will show you how to configure that room, where to put the speakers based on the type of home theater that you have, whether it's a 5.1, you know, 7.1, et cetera. Uh, so check that out. Obviously, many of you had the chance to experience that to enter this giveaway, which is great. Uh, but if you haven't had the chance, please check it out. Let us know. Leave your feedback. But I'll open that question up first. Uh, maybe for those who, who aren't as familiar with home theater, tell us a little about the ideal home theater room uh, configuration. And we can talk a little bit more about if you don't have that, maybe a couple different options. I'll let you there, Francois, if you want. Uh, that's that's a very tough question here. Um, huh. Uh, you know, I would say let's let's get practical. You know, at one point you you have a house, you have a certain amount of of space to be used. So I, I would say, and that's why today we're presenting something a bit different. It's not just about speaker, but we're presenting uh, room treatment and also isolator. So I would say the thing is to maximize, optimize the space that you have for your uh, uh, cinema home theater. Uh, so I know it's a very open answer, but it's difficult to say, oh, you need 20 feet and you need 30 feet there and 12 feet uh, ceiling. You know, uh, let again, let's get practical and try to use your, your space uh, and maximize also your, your room treatment and also your isolation with your speakers. Yeah, Leon, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe kind of hand this to you. You've, you've obviously written a lot on audiovice.com about home theater setup. You wrote basically a whole thesis on uh, home theater. Uh, buyer's it guide. Like 25,000 words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, break that into very you know, digestible uh, topics within uh, Leon's thesis that he wrote, which is incredibly uh, well, well, well written. But what are your thoughts on obviously, you know, just some of the traditional ideal configurations for home theater, if you have the ability to do so, but then obviously for most folks who don't, maybe some other options. Well, if you don't, you know, I think you, you want to get the right if we're just talking about speakers and not the, the video display, you obviously want to sit, you know, in between the speakers. You want to try to be equal to, you know, that where your main seating area is, you're not way off to the side, that you're kind of in that cone. And then the center channel should be either above or under your screen and should be in a position where it doesn't really have impact from resonance. So it shouldn't be like inside a cabinet if you can help it. It should be out so it can uh, breathe. Then I think it's just, you know, if you're going to do surround or Atmos, it's configuring it within that kind of area that you're in. Um, but it, it really it depends upon so much on the room and the room has such a big impact on the sound. I think so many people forget about that, that just even some drapes or plants or something to minimize those reflections will make the dialogue, which is the most important track in home theater, mm -hmm. so much easier to understand. You don't want to have to throw up the subtitles because you can't understand what they're saying. You know, it's you. You've got to get the dialogue right, and uh, the the Vicoustics panels are great for that because normally rooms just have too much reflection, and a few of those strategically placed, or even just tapestries, curtains, anything, just to keep that sound from bouncing around is, I think, really critical. And don't overlook the difference that can make versus even better speakers can do. Yeah, we uh, we just posted a link to our uh, acoustic guide, but maybe, uh, you know, Francois, Patrick, uh, Chris, you guys could talk a little bit more. Here's a good chance maybe to talk about bi-acoustics um, and maybe what set those apart and some of the, the best use case applications, again, for folks who don't have an ideal or optimal room configuration to really help optimize the sound of a, of a home theater. 
So let, let me start maybe to, to explain that uh, th those products um, are, are meant for four things, actually. When, when you talked about uh, acoustic, there's always four elements that you're looking at. The first one, I mean, it doesn't matter the priority, it depends on your room, but let, let's start with the first one, I would say base management. To avoid base knob, as Chris mentioned, you know, if you're using two subs, it's better than just one because, you know, you have more spreading of the base in your room. So you need to, to control your base. The second, the second element that is really important is your first reflection. So usually in a room, the first third of uh, of your room from the speaker the main speak the main speaker you create a first uh, reflection and usually that reflection uh, is not uh, will not give you the precision of the sound stage will not give you the precision of what's coming from the the speaker so you need to control that the other aspect that you need to control is what we call rt reflection time and there's two things if you're if you're setting your room for music Ideally, you will have a 0 0.7 second reflection RT. And if you're doing a, a home theater, you will go for a deadier room at 0 0.5, maybe a bit less, just to make sure that you're not losing your, your, your attention to the reflection and more on what's going on from the, 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 the speaker, from the source. And then the last one, which is important, is to control your back wall to control the reflection from your back wall. So actually the, um, the, the, the white paper that is available uh, on, on your site at the moment uh, is from Vicoustic is very interesting because I would say that almost 80% of all the room treatment project will fall within that white paper. So anyone can use those knowledge and be able to improve in, in, in a great way his room actually. Just, yeah. just to add to that there, Francois, is that, again, mm -hmm. on the white papers is that um, we have a rating between zero and one. So zero is absolutely complete absorption, and one is complete reflection. So mm -hmm. when you're looking at the, the RT values, that's, that's how you determine that. Uh, They're really great products for the money. And let's show some of Patrick's in use case. He's got a great setup. Yeah. So we've got Patrick, and uh, here we go. Maybe one, you can see Patrick's a heck of a musician, right? He's got he's got a pretty sweet setup. Well, I'm, uh, a, I'm a poser. <laughs> I think we all are. When we get that. That's why we're in. My wife was uh, my, my wife was nice enough to let me have a uh, unfinished part of our basement, and so um, I had it um, sheetrocked with uh, soundbreak sheetrock, which is basically uh, soundproof, very very thick, expensive, heavy. Um, I used uh, isolators on the studs to isolate the, the, the sheetrock from the studs. Um, you know, you know, um, very expensive. You know, insulation. And then once I got the room uh, to that point, it basically was very, very live, too live. Like basically, like the livest bathroom you ever could possibly imagine. Just echoes and reverb, and just the bass would just go everywhere, and it was just it was unusable at that point. So. Um, so Vicoustics actually has a service where they'll actually, you give them the, the dimensions of your room and your, your use case scenario, and they'll actually come back to you with plans on, um, you know, what you need, um, you know, different colors and actually give you a 12 page uh, printout of exactly um, what they suggest, the products, the models, the quantities, where to place them, um, everything, including a video, a 3D video, where you can actually walk through the room design and so they did that for me, and I actually installed uh, it myself. And uh, I'm not quite done with the walls yet. I got to add the cinema rounds, which are, are part of the giveaway that we're giving away. But I have the um, wave wood diffusers on the ceiling you can see there. I have the multi diffuser on the, the far wall. You flip back to the, the first photo there. Uh, and then I have the base traps there in the, in the corner. So every corner has a base trap. And then the, right down below the TV is the multi diffuser that um, Francois was speaking of as well. And and since I've put all that in a few weeks ago, um, I mean, the sound quality is unbelievable. Just the, the clarity, the depth, and the best part is, is that the sound now uh, stays in the room, which was the whole purpose of the room because, you know, when my wife and kids go to bed at 9 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays, I like to go down and 
play my guitar and listen to some music and jam out. And uh, it was causing issues in my marriage. <laughs> so, <laughs> understatement. So uh, now I can do that and I'm happy. She's happy. Kids don't wake up and uh, it sounds phenomenal. And uh, our, our house is a much happier place. And, uh, but the nice thing is that by acoustics was a partner with me and helped me design this, made it very easy for me to figure this out and uh, help me install it. And, and of course, uh, audio advice could do that, all this for you as well. Uh, but it made a, a massive difference. So it could be used for home studios, for home theaters, for two channel listening rooms, for even an office, for acoustics in an office, for, for commercial, everything. So great yeah. company. And a lot of the products are actually made from recycled materials, recycled uh, uh, bottles, plastic bottles, which is cool as well. So That's really cool. Super yeah. cool. Yeah. And you know, for what it sells for, Patrick, the, the, the Vicoustic stuff is just an amazing value for what it, it costs compared to some of the yeah. other stuff out there in the market. It's Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, really cool. Can you talk a little bit maybe about the importance of, you know, wall acoustic treatments versus the ceiling? And then what if you don't have, a you know, four walls, if you've got something that's open, you know, if you had to prioritize, what would your thoughts be on that? That again, I will go for the four things that I mentioned before: RT, base management, first reflection, and back wall. So let's say that uh, you don't have a back wall, then RT is probably your problem. It's it's uh, it, of course it depends of your room, but I would suggest to start with that. Yeah. Got it. Anything else? To, anything else to add from anyone else? No, right. in that room, just you know, the I still need to put the sim rounds on the on the walls that are bare. So that's that's my plan for this weekend. So, <laughs> so it's almost done. So I think I think the only thing that we really didn't talk about is 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 how fashionable they are. They, they the product looks amazing. You know, right. there's there's a lot of acoustic stuff out there. Um, and 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 the truth is is that uh, Caesar, who who is the owner of acoustics, started the company because his his wife hated. The looks of, of the acoustic treatment at the time. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, so he, he wanted stuff that not only performed but was was uh, you know would integrate into into the home setting so that it wasn't uh, you know it didn't stand out and, and look foreign. We love having Dustin on the live streams. He has another great one. He says, "Is Francois the new most interesting man in the world?" <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's great. He usually has a cat walking around. The cat's missing. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, my yeah. cat is missing. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit more, maybe, about the uh, the Cora series. That's been a big hit for you guys. Uh, it's been really successful here at Audio Advice. Maybe you guys can elaborate a little bit more uh, about that lineup. Sure. So, well, the the, uh, the core product is is our is our newest uh, category, our newest product within the uh, the floor standing product. Um, with this is that um, you know when we introduced the core here in the late 2019 is that we also introduced the world to a new cone technology. Um, this cone technology is called slate fiber, and, and we've got you know over four years of development uh, into this new technology. Um, and what's wonderful about this is that. You know, we're we're one of the, if not the only company in the world that has actually developed a new uh, a cone technology for our, and again our quote unquote entry level product line. So it's it's been it's been amazing. It's got amazing value. It sounds, um, it's outstanding. The pro, you know the the performance to dollar value. And the slate fiber just looks really cool too. It's, yeah, it has yeah. You know, I mean, the number one question I get is that uh, you know we have we have a lot of cone technologies like our W cone and uh, and especially our most recognizable these days is our flax cone where we use you know real organic flax strands in in our cones. Um, so with the slate fiber, I'll tell you is that there is no slate in it. Uh, first and foremost, um, it's just it's the it's based on the coloring. But we do use a a recycled uh, non woven carbon fiber. Uh, within within that cone technology, um, and again, it's it's been absolutely un outstanding. Um, probably the other real major key feature is is uh, that is our new A two six D, which is a Dolby enabled Atmos speaker. So where we have a you know our standard co uh, core A two six floor standing speaker with a Dolby speaker uh, encapsulated into the top of of the floor standard. 
Um, and we've taken that and paired that slate fiber cone with a, with a patented technology called uh, the augmented directivity um, uh, waveguide, basically. And this allows us to, to, um, to basically simulate as if you had speakers in the ceiling for the Atmos effect. And it's, and it's uh, a great way to do it, too, if you can't get wires to your ceiling, which is not the easiest thing to do in uh, existing construction. Yeah. Well, that and, and we have a lot of clients that have, are, you know, are in our in apartment buildings or they rent, uh, for example. So they don't have those options to to actually install those speakers. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of success, uh, you know, Dolby Atmos. This is a certified Dolby Atmos pro uh, product. Uh, and when they when they certified it, they were so impressed that they uh, they actually mm -hmm. used uh, this product in, in a lot of their trade show displays, uh, both at CES and at NAM this uh, last year. So you know they were, it, it is absolutely stunning, especially for the for the dollar value. A lot of people have asked, you know, what are the di what are the di different uh, thoughts on you know tower speakers, external speakers versus in ceiling or in wall, you know, those kind of things. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on that. Some of it obviously has to do with just limitations of the room. Again, Chris, as you mentioned, if you rent versus if you own and you have the ability or existing construction versus new, but maybe just some general thoughts on, on ideal performance. And then if you don't have, you know, the, uh, the perfect situation, maybe, you know, what some of the options are similar to the, the Civ Evo package that you guys uh, are giving away today. So, um, I mean, the, the advantages, I mean, there's, there's always, um, uh, there's always an advantage of being able to place a speaker in the ceiling. Um, obviously, we are shortening wavelengths uh, in that particular case and, and dispersion patterns. Um, you know, when we talk about the Sib Evo Atmos product and the and the Cora uh, A26D, uh, again, this is a amazing solution uh, for again the fact that again, you know, post construction or or renting and so on like that, where we have the ability to give height speakers. Um, the advantage of that is, is that again, we're not having to cut holes, we're not having to run wires. Um, it's basically set it up and and tune it properly, you know, and that and that will be done through the receiver for time limits. Mm -hmm. Any other any other thoughts there? Cool. All right, we we think we covered it. We're all frozen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, Patrick, in, in the photo that we showed, and maybe we, we'll pull it back up, uh, you had an example of isoacoustics. Um, yeah. So maybe you guys can talk a little bit more about that one, just maybe provide some of the backstory on the brand because it is a great uh, story. And then, you know, again, here you've got a perfect use case situation. So maybe you guys can tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Francois, you have the brand story, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> actually, um, the, the the story behind the the, the stands from Iso Acoustic, um, the man is called uh, David Morrison. Um, David used to work for the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and he was part of the team that uh, developed and installed, uh, you know, studios everywhere in Canada. And they had a big challenge when they did the multimedia uh, center downtown Toronto because they. There were so much noise around, so much vibration that they had to decouple everything in the building. And, and as a joke, he used to say that even the bathroom was decoupled from the main building. So um, the story is at one point he bought a pair of uh, PSB speaker, you know, uh, Paul Barton, uh, designer. And he invited Paul to, uh, to do the install at his place. And, and Paul mentioned something like, oh, you know, I can even design the best speaker, but the problem is always the interaction between my speaker and the room. And I, I can't control that. And then David had this click, you know, like, oh, I should use what, you know, we're using to decouple the floors from the, the, the building and downsize it for speaker, for normal usage for everyone. So that's why he came out with uh, this, this type of sands or, or this type of product. So the idea is to decouple the cabinet from the room and the room also from the cabinet. So the main difference with a spike, actually, it's because they are using different type of material. So you have different decoupling um, um, effect on your speaker. And also they have um, a pattern in, in their design where if I can show, I don't know if you see it, um, you know, where, where actually the, the, uh, the speaker uh, will will be able to to move in just one direction and not on the other direction. So you're making sure that your speaker, because it will move anyway, you know, it's law of physics, action, reaction. So your speaker will, will just move in one plan. 
So that will give you a lot of focus for uh, for your sound stage, and also it will clean the bass in in a very great manner. Maybe Patrick, you can explain the difference with and without when you play bass. Yeah. So um, what I did when I when I joined the company, I, I had these uh, samples, and there's different sizes. There's the the Isopuck Mini. Uh, there's a medium size and then the 76 and they're all based on different uh, weight sizes. So the mini uh, is good for six pounds. Uh, the medium is 20 and then the big one right here, the 76 is good for 40 pounds each. So um, you can also use them for you know, musical instruments, which I use in my studio. So I, um, the, the one below my, my Marshall head is called the Stageboard One. Uh, which is a platter with with four of the minis, and that'll hold a hundred pounds. So that um, decouples the the head from the cabinet, and then below the cabinet, I have the uh, Isopuck seventy sixes to decouple the the speaker cabinet from both. I have two cabinets, so they're all decoupled from one another. Um, but uh, so just what I noticed in the sound is that, especially like the low E string, um, it was just much clearer, less muddy. And I could hear like this. My guitars had never been so clear, even with distortion. It was just amazing. But mainly the the low E string, especially on my Les Paul. Les Pauls are generally a little muddier sounding. Typically, it was just crystal clear, and it was just amazing the difference. So you can use it for you know home studios, for live music, for um, bookshelf speakers, floor speakers. I mean anything. We all, they also make uh, turntable platters as well. Um, so they make all kinds of products that, that help to, to isolate from the, yeah, so. Cool. Maybe, uh, Leon, uh, your appreciation with the product, because when I when I went to your store, I did the demo, uh, yes. when was that? Maybe a year ago, oh, and I was quite impressed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And even the little, you take just desktop computer speakers that are $300 and put an ISO acoustic stand on it, and you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, wow. And they the the stuff really works and again it's like the acoustics it, it's very reasonably priced for what it does compared to a lot of the competition so i i love it um, so, um, and ask uh are these also good for turntable isolation yes yes, yes. so they have uh <clears throat> they have the zazen and the yep. delos or yep. delos uh, yeah. based is kind of based upon the weight of your turntable and uh, we got one for up to 25 pounds, up to 40 pounds, up to 55, 60, 90, and 100. And uh, they should work really well. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to go in next week and try some out and test them because we, we're writing a review on those to test them out. Uh, now just, maybe just to mention, uh, Jonathan, I, uh, you can include, uh, I, I sent the white paper about uh, isoacoustic. I will really invite people to have a, a good look at it. Uh, the reading is very interesting. You're going to learn a lot about decoupling and why it's working. This white paper is based on some measurement that they did at the National uh, Research Center in Canada. So it's not just, you know, pretension. It's real fact. So, uh, yeah, you should have a reading. <laughs> I, uh, we just linked several times to, the, to that white paper so people have that accessible. It's in the comments. You guys can obviously see that below, uh, which is great. How do you know how many... Um, Pucks you need, you know, based on the situ the uh, what you know what it is the use case that you're listening to. Yeah, but everything is based on weight. Eh? Mm -hmm. So let's imagine this one is good for six pound. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you have a uh, let's say a twelve pound speaker, you will need at least three because anyway you need three three points to sit your speaker in, and there's a ten percent I would say ten percent uh, margin that you need to give you so. It's not really six pound, it's just a bit below six pounds. So 10% uh, below, just to make sure, because you know, the repartition of the weight on the cabinet is not exactly in the center. It could be a bit up front. It depends of your the weight and the construction of your uh, of your cabinet and your speaker. So uh, yeah, but everything yeah, is based on those, uh, Yeah, that's where I think those bases work really good for turntables because they kind of help spread it out over, over yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. And add a little bit of mass too. They they look yeah. really good. Um, cool. Let's uh, maybe talk a little bit. Maybe transition a little bit to talk about. A lot of people have asked questions about your your headphone lineup, and you guys are known for you know some like I said some very great high end premium headphones. Maybe you guys can just kind of run us through the lineup. We also have a great comparison guide 
on the clear and the utopia, but maybe you guys can walk us through, you know, some of the thoughts that go into your head, headphone lineup. Sure. Um, so we, uh, you know, we got into the headphone um, category uh, 2012. Um, and most people, you know, some people know that, but most people recognize us for when we got into the high end headphone category uh, in 2016. And that's when we launched uh, two products into the market. That was the Allier and, and Utopia, uh, which is our flagship. And then, uh, so with that, I mean, currently over the years, we've continuously developed new models. We've introduced new models. Um, so with that, currently to date is that we have our Clear and our Utopia headphone. And I, I have, to have a Utopia headphone here with me, which is, uh, again, our flagship. There's our Clear right there in with, with Patrick. Um, and again, these are these are open back headphones that again, you know, we can we can hear uh, information coming in. So we we prefer uh, or suggest that this used to be a, a little bit more quiet uh, atmosphere. Um, with that as well as that we have uh, two closed back headphones. We have our flagship, uh, the uh, Stelia, which is uh, Patrick's holding there. Again, this has been uh, absolutely outstanding. Um, and then we just launched uh, a new limited edition uh, closed back headphone called Radiance. And that was actually a partnership with Bentley uh, that we just launched in, uh, in September. And with that is that uh, I think there's only 1,300 models in the world with that, with that unit. So if you can get your hands on one, it, it, now's the time. Yeah. And, and it's you know, great value for the money. Yeah. Headphones are like speakers. You know, they, they all sound different. But Focal headphones are just the most comfortable headphones on the market. There is no question. They, they are the easiest to wear on your head for a long period of time of anything I've ever seen. Well, the nice thing about that is, is that we, you know, we have a patented headband. Um, the fact is, is that from, you know, from finger to finger here, we have, you know, over a hundred parts within, within this headphone here. And this allows us obviously not to only have adjustments, but also have articulation so that we can actually change the headphone yeah. and it doesn't, come, it doesn't come off the ear as we move. Um, but it also allows us to, to fit, upwards of 90 95 percent of the heads in the world um because we're all built different we all have all different have placements of our ears and so on so we wanted to be able to accommodate as many people as possible um you know one thing that was really set us apart from from a lot of the other manufacturers is that you know we created a new technology for headphones um it's basically our full range near field open back speaker um and again this is probably the newest technology that's been put into the headphone category in, in over 30 years um and and so we really relied heavily on our you know 40 years of previous development on speakers and thought you know if we do speakers really well why can't we put a speaker into uh into a headphone and that and that's what we did yeah we actually have the, the radiance available in stock uh, obviously at audioadvice.com i will say my sort of first foray into uh high performance high-end headphones were the out clears and uh, those, when I first put those on, it was like night and day from anything I'd ever heard before. So I definitely have to give you guys, you know, a big, big shout out there because I was just blown away by how, uh, what, what a difference someone like myself at, at the time who didn't really know a lot about high performance headphones, you know, you could just instantly hear the tremendous difference in performance. Well, thank you. Like I said, uh, you know, we're yeah. extremely proud of our, uh, of our high end headphone category. Uh, and, and we're always continuously developing, uh, you know, new products and, and, uh, New colors, new platforms, and so uh, so we're excited. Uh, several yeah, people have asked about what's the new, new new Newtopia coming. Uh, uh, new Utopia. <laughs> when is it coming? We could it's, we, uh, it's, we could tell you, but we'd have to black you out after this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. I'll never forget. Uh, for those of you guys who are familiar with Audio Advice, uh, once a year we have a great event called Music Matters. Uh, obviously not, not this year due to COVID, but uh, in the past, we always have a great event called Music Matters and our friends from Focal came and you guys brought uh, a lot of your different headphones, but you brought a pair of your like top of the line uh, Utopia <laughs> headphones that yeah. are, you know, yeah. I don't even know, $100,000. Uh, yeah. My wife took a picture of them, you know, and I said with uh, them on her ears and I was like, you know, don't get too comfortable. <laughs> They're not coming <laughs> off. <laughs> but that was pretty I mean, so we, we, we hold about 50 or 60 reviews as, as, you know, best headphone in the world with our Utopia. Um, one of the things that we're, we're, we're quite proud of is that we also hold basically the status for the most expensive headphone in the world. Um, so we have basically taken a Utopia and we paired with uh, or partnered with a, a very fr uh, high end French uh, iconic jeweler out of Paris uh, called Tonnerre. And yeah. we created a Utopia by Tonnerre. 
Um, so it is ultimately a Focal Utopia headphone uh, paired with 200 grams of 24 karat gold and six and a half carats of flawless diamonds. And, uh, you know, we wow. reach these out at 120,000 US. Um, they are extremely bucket limited change. in production. <laughs> yeah. Bucket change. Yeah, market change. <laughs> we don't have those in stock. Not a good deal. deal. <laughs> so, and again, we do special, we build those special. Um, so with them is that we have only assigned eight serial numbers uh, for those for those headphones. Wow. Um, and with that is, is that we actually take a portion of those of those sales and we actually donate them back to a to, to a charity uh, back in back in Paris with with the Tone Air by Utopia. Cool. Oh, I didn't know that. That's good to know. Hey, Chris, Chris, who brought those to the event, and did they have a bodyguard with them? That's right. Okay. <laughs> That's me. I'd be afraid to get robbed. Holy yeah, God. I mean, it's uh, I mean, funny story with that is that uh, I was on my way to a show and I had them in my backpack. Um, you know, and went to airport security and the guy goes through my bag, opens up, and just went, oh. And closed them right up and sent me on my way. Wow. Uh, we've got uh, from I think it's Zephyr Video is, is the uh, the handle on his name. And but several people have asked questions along these lines. So talk a little bit maybe about the importance of break in time or warm up time, not only for headphones but maybe also for speakers as well. For those folks who may not know why that's important or that that's even necessary. Um, so, I mean, obviously, um, speakers, headphones, you know, all, all basically everything that we've talked about today are moving parts, um, you know, and, and we can reference them back to anything else that's mechanical out there, like a car, as an example, when you buy a car, they always tell you to, you know, stay under a certain RPM, as, as we'll call it, for X amount of kilometers, just to make sure that all the parts start to break in. And that's, that's the same with, all, with uh, you know, with all of our speakers and headphones. Um, on average is that we, uh, you know, we want to see roughly about 100, 100 playing hours at a, at a mid-level, we'll call it, uh, something that's, uh, you know, some, a music track that's got some, you know, some good dynamics, uh, you know, lots of horns, lots of bottom end kind of thing, but again, at a, at a mid-volume. And this just allows us to have, you know, the, the surrounds and the spiders and all that stuff, uh, you know, break into the point where um, it, it you will see a, a product that goes from, a really good output when you first plug it in or start playing it to something that is is uh, the depth grows the bottom you know the frequency range is uh, it, you know expand and it becomes a lot more detailed throughout it um, it's and it's and it's a wonderful experience to be sitting in front of a speakers and day after day after day you start to you start to hear them change and and evolve to to where you know they can really hit their peak performance so, like I said, it's it's a wonderful experience, but yeah, we do want to see roughly about a hundred hours on on the headphones and 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 both the same on on a lot of our speakers. Yep. Yeah, and, and you know, and you know, it's all, it goes also true for electronics. Eh? So, if you have uh, some some name equipment or any other brands, it's always su suggested to have at least fifty hour of break in on your amp or preamp or CD player or streamer. To make sure that all the capacitor, all the parts, are working together, because as you know, a capacitor is like a battery, so it charge and discharge. So it needs some time to to reach its ideal point. So uh, figure at least fifty hour, two hundred usually is the best, but the, at the minimum fifty hour for any any type of equipment. Yeah, Leon, I was going to ask you, you know, you obviously try a ton of speakers, <laughs> right? Test out lots of speakers, and I remember. Uh, one of the first pair of speakers I ever saw you you test out was a pair of bookshelf powered speakers, and at first you were like these were you were not. These are horrible. I was putting it like, <laughs> uh, but and then after about a hundred hours on them, they were like, whoa, these are amazing. So it, it does make a difference. It makes a huge, huge difference. So for folks who don't know, that, I know the customer today that was complaining initially that his system didn't sound right. We set him up with was it was actually an integrated amplifier. Said after burning in for 100 hours, it's totally different now. It sounds amazing. Yeah. And for those folks who may say, man, I got to listen to 100 hours, like that could take forever. But the reality is, you could leave them on at a low level overnight, yeah. right, for a day or yeah. two. Put the streamer on and let it go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. And three days and you're, you're, you're done. Yep. There you go. Um, let's see here. Maybe time for one more question and then we'll give away some cool gear here. Um, let me pull up a few here. Or if you guys saw any questions that you guys want to uh, address, feel free to jump. Feel free to call those out. Let's see here. Uh, 
All right. Well, where can find where can folks find out more uh, about Focal? If they obviously, if it's your website, if they want to come to Audio Advice, you know, we obviously have a lot of gear on display. If people have additional questions and want to learn more about Focal, where can they uh, learn more? Uh, but, honestly, our, our website is is full of, of technical information, and that is just uh, it's really simple. It's just www.focal.com. Um, and again, we have all of our products there, uh, all of categories are there. And again, if, when you start getting into uh, into some of the uh, um, tech talks, I guess we have them in the site as well, and it explains a lot of the technologies that we use: our sandwich cone technology, uh, you know, our inverted dome technology, yeah. our, uh, our, you know, and the materials that we use, you know, the W cone, the plax cone, uh, the new uh, slate fiber, the beryllium, the aluminum magnesium. Um, all that information is there. And, and again, obviously, uh, you know, partners with uh, you guys, because again, you, you know, Audio Vice is, uh, is a lot of, uh, um, you know, very knowledgeable staff. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate it. Last question really quick. A lot of people have been asking about uh, subwoofers. Any, any big plans and expansion or, or in that category? Um, so again, we do have uh, a couple of subs on the market uh, that are doing extremely well for us. Our uh, our new sub 1000 F. This has been with us for about a year and a half or so. This is a uh, a flax a, fla a flax sandwich cone technology uh, paired with a thousand watts. Um, this has been absolutely fantastic for us. Uh, we uh, we just released our new sub 600 P, which uh, which finalizes the core line. Uh, and again, can be utilized. You know, we can utilize this with uh, with any of our products as well. So, um, and then we have a couple specialty subwoofers. We have our uh, our Sub Air, which is actually a uh, eight inch wireless subwoofer that can be placed. Uh, you know, can be placed in the corner. Can be placed under uh, under a furniture. Um, and we also include the bracket, so you can actually hang it on the wall. Excellent. And Excellent. Maybe, maybe the good thing also about the uh, Focal speaker, I mean, it's no frills. Mm -hmm. eh? If you if you have a feature, it's because we believe it is really functioning. It, uh, just not another button that we're adding because it's nice looking, you know. Mm -hmm. So just uh, yeah, we, we, we like to keep things very simple and very efficient. Well, guys, this has been a ton of fun. We obviously covered a lot. You know, we covered home theater, uh, two channel, a little bit of two channel, a little bit more about headphones. Uh, and you guys have been a great partner and we're looking forward to continuing to grow our relationship with, with Focal. If folks have any questions, again, feel free to reach out to audioadvice.com via phone, email, chat. And I know that folks have asked a lot of questions. We will uh, check back tomorrow and we will go back and answer as many of these questions as we can that we weren't able to get to uh, tonight. So again, we thank everyone for asking a lot of great questions. And again, this has been a lot of fun. Chris, Francois, Patrick, Thank you for your time uh, this afternoon, in your case, Chris, and this, this evening, Francois and Patrick. And uh, Patrick, I think you made a lot of jealous with your uh, your studio in the basement, which oh, is really yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a couple of fun giveaways here. So we have two pair of these uh, Focal Spark headphones. So the winners for those are uh, Dustin Munson, and for his most interesting man comment, uh, a question about Francois, and for <laughs> <laughs> Brian <laughs> Rapp Rappoid. Uh, Brian Rappoid, I think is how you pronounce it. For he's the one who really asked several uh, good questions on the uh, the isolation um, and teen up some of the acoustic questions that we had. And the winner of the Muso QB, which is a nine hundred dollar value. Uh, this person has been on several of our live streams and has asked a lot of great questions. So that's going to be Brian Decker. So Becker, I'm sorry, Brian Becker. So congrats, Brian. That's a sweet system. Lots of fun. Sounds great. We actually have that in our uh, in our showrooms on display as well. And it so now, great. That, that's a great sounding piece, John. Oh yeah, that sounds so great. Good. And it looks really cool. And you guys have several different options in terms of grill colors as well to kind of spice it up if you if you want to do so. So that's been a really popular uh, speaker for us as well. And then finally, let's put it back on the screen. Uh, the full giveaway again, our forty-five hundred dollar value giveaway. The uh, the Sib Evo, uh, the wall mounts, and the full setup. Right, you've got your bi-acoustic uh, acoustic panels. You've got your um, iso acoustic uh, stands as well. So this is over forty-five hundred dollar value. Five dot one dot two home theater giveaway. The winner is R J. Is it Watch Out? I don't know how to say that exactly. I apologize. But RJ from Sedona, Arizona, you are our yeah. luck winner. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. Oh, Congratulations. What a great 
City too. Great... He loves it. Yeah. Oh yeah, beautiful. There you go. You're gonna have a great setup. So again, thanks to everyone who is uh, who's dialed in and joined us today. Our live our giveaway, I'm sorry, our giveaway for our next live stream is up and ready to go. We're doing another powered speaker uh, turntable combination from our friends at Audio Engine and Project. We will link to that. It is live now. Thanks again to everyone who joined us this evening. Thanks to everyone who's asked all, a lot of great questions. Thanks again to our, our great panel. This was a great conversation. Had a lot of fun. Cover a lot of different topics. And again, check back tomorrow if you want to uh, see some of the answers uh, that we can knock out those tomorrow. And again, we'll post this on our Facebook and YouTube channel. So Happy New Year again, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you again next month. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.